error values and move semantics might be embarrassing and confusing. But with this video, you will get a clear understanding about what they are and how to use them properly. But before, let's jump into the C++ 98 error to understand the main issues is they address. A common problem at this time was in constructors and set methods that took a container or class instance for storage inside a class member. If the constructor of your class took a container in C++ 98 such as the vector, it had to allocate a buffer called the entire container element by element. While this behavior was desirable for non-temporary values, it led to unnecessary coupling for the temporary values. There was no way to tell the compiler, just take the internal state of the temporary variable and relocate it into the class member. For example, for std vector, this could mean copying the internal pointer to the buffer and replacing it with a null pointer inside the temporary object. This approach would save significant performance by avoiding deep copying of content. Another problem was that classes with deleted copy constructor such as stdfstream could not easily be passed to a class constructor and stored as a class member. Fast forward to nowadays, C++ provides a radius to address these problems. A radius is essentially a temporary values that are not assigned to any variable. To inform the compiler that a particular method requires an array u, we use an array reference denoted by two ampersands. Returning to our class constructor, we can create an overload for an array reference to std vector that, instead of copying elements of a temporary vector, simply adopts or moves the pointer to the underlying buffer into the class member. This operation is safe because the temporary object will be destroyed after the constructor returns and it is much faster than copying elements. Later in this video I will show a better alternative to having L value and a value overloads for function parameters. Temporary values alone are not always useful. In some cases a std vector is created and then, based on some condition, filled with specific elements. In such a case, the vector is no longer a temporary object. But if it won't used after the constructor call, using the L value overload and copying it contained wastes resources. As a solution, it can be converted into an L value reference using stdmove. So, stdmove simply tells the compiler treat this object as an array value, allowing to invoke the appropriate move constructor or method. However, be cautious using a variable after calling stdmove without reinitializing it is error prone. Never, never do this. Even though an array value reference points to a temporary object, it has a name when used as a function parameter, making it an L value. Because of this, if you want to pass that parameter to a move constructor, you need to use stdmove to convert the reference itself back into an R value. To enable move semantics for your type, you need to define a move constructor and move assignment operator. However, default move constructor and move assignment operator are generated by the compiler. But if you have custom destructor, you have to provide those methods explicitly. For example, if I need a custom container, instead of using std vector, I must implement a destructor along with the move constructor and move assignment operator. Make sure to fully transfer ownership of resources from the temporary object in move constructor and move assignment operator. For instance, in a container class, do not forget to replace the pointer to the buffer in the temporary object with null pointer. Failing to do so could cause a double delete or memory corruption when the temporary object is destroyed. If your class takes an std vector in constructor and stores it as a member, you might wonder whether you should have two constructors, one taking L value reference and one taking R value reference. A better approach is to take the argument by value and then use stdmove to initialize the class member. The method has two advantages. No need for multiple constructor overloads, the performance impact is minimal. 
If you still want to create separate overloads for L values and R values, try this exercise with a constructor taking three parameters. You would need eight overloads. However, with passing by value approach, only one constructor is required. From efficiency standpoint, the pass by value approach requires for L values one copy constructor and one move constructor, for L values just two move constructors. This results in only one extra move constructor call, which is incredibly cheap. In general, you don't need to use stdmove for returning local variable or function parameter obtained by value. Compiler will call automatically appropriate move constructor. However, there are cases where stdmove is beneficial, such as member function with air value reference qualifier, in other words, member functions called on temporary objects. In these cases, using stdmove can optimize performance by moving objects instead of copying them. While air values might seem intimidating, they are just a way to represent temporary values. Until you will develop a library, you won't interact with them frequently. However, understanding air values is still important. Follow these rules when working with them. Implement move constructors and move assignment operators carefully and only if you really need them. If you need to store an object, take it by value and then move it into the member. Do not use a variable after std move without reinitialization. If you like this video, give it a thumb up and check out my other content.